1 Peter 2, 9 says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. How many of you know you are chosen this morning? You are chosen. Do you believe that? Do you believe that you were chosen? You are a royal priesthood. You are set up in heavenly places. Amen? Amen. Look, I believe God wants to do something in you this morning. The question is, did you come expecting God to do something in you this morning? Let's just bow our hearts and our heads towards the Lord this morning. And let's just say a simple prayer. Father, have your way in me today. And I want, if there's anything in you that would keep you from just pressing in this morning, anything that would block you from just stepping into the Holy of Holies, I want you just to take a moment because here's what Jesus did on the cross. He died on the cross so that you may have communion with God. He made a way for you to do that. And so, Jesus, we thank you for what you did and the blood that was shed for us so that we might have communion with a holy God. And I pray that if there are any distractions this morning, we'd have those, restract, those distractions removed right now in the name of Jesus. Fear, you must leave. Doubt, worry, you must leave. Sickness, any infirmity, you must leave now. We break off every chain that would keep us from pressing in and pressing on into the Holy of Holies this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, amen. Amen. Let's give God a great big shout of praise this morning. out from the depths into your freedom our chains are gone no weapon form shall prevail your word is stronger we overcome come on Your glory resounds through the age, all saints declare your great renown. Your kingdom forever will stand, we won't be shaken, we will not fear. Our God, our God, a mighty warrior, you're our consuming fire. the great commander you conquer death forever in victory you reign we triumph in your name your glory resounds through the age all saints declare your great renown your kingdom forever will stand we won't be shaken we will not fear our god a mighty warrior you're a consuming fire in victory you reign we triumph in your name Jesus, the great commander, you conquer death forever. In victory you reign, we triumph in your name. We declare your 
can't stop the Lord Almighty. Who can stop the Lord? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? For the sins of the world, his blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Every knee will bow before him. We make way for the King of Kings. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a great big shout of praise. Come on, give him praise in this house this morning. Make way for the King. Make way for the King. Hallelujah. Woo. Turn around and greet your neighbor this morning and welcome them here to this place and then you may take your seat. Come on up, come on up with us. We're so happy today because we get to receive them to our family as partners, church. Hallelujah. Praise God. Our family's growing. I was like, Hugo, are you sure y'all are not already partners? And he's like, no, Pastor, you know. These are, these are your sweet family. Sweet family. You know, this family, they traveled. From, tell me, I, Sterling City. I get those Guard City and Sterling City messed up, but they traveled from Sterling City to be here at church for the last year and a half, two years. Come on, somebody. I I I know that old saying: a church alive is worth the drive, huh? And uh, I, I'm so thankful for you guys. And I'm glad y'all are finally. And they finally moved back to Midland. They got, come on somebody, they finally moved back to Midland. <laughs> but we're so glad. We're so glad y'all are here. Welcome home. Welcome home. I was thinking about a verse of scripture for you guys. And then we're going to welcome you as partners. And, and uh, we're going to pray over you as a family. 
And it's over in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19. Ephesians 1, 19. I'm going to read a little bit. And then, then I'll go over to uh, Corinthians chapter 13 where it talks about the body and how the body is jointly fit and supplied. And v- verse 19, it says, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might, dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but in that which is to come. And he put all things, say that with me, all things. He put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church. Jesus is head over all things in the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. We are incomplete without Jesus, but we're also incomplete without one another. Huh? And every, in, in Corinthians chapter 13, it talks about how every joint supplies. This church has been needing Hugo and Claudia and your family. And I believe what you're bringing to this body is something powerful, something of great supply, and we're so excited and so thankful. I tell, I tell everybody that we prayed you in. We prayed you in, and we're so thankful to the Lord that he answered our prayers. Amen. If you are a partner of Lifehouse Fellowship Church, would you please stand to your feet? If you have not gone through partnership, I want to encourage you to go through partnership class. If you don't know how to do that, you'll see Miss Amy right back here in the Connection Center. Miss Amy, raise your hand. There you go. All right. Partners, let's stretch our hands forth and receive our new family members. Father, today I'm honored to just stand in this place of And I, I, what do I say, God, that displays my heart of gratitude? I'm so thankful for Hugo and Claudia. I'm so thankful for their commitment to make Lifehouse and your body a priority. Father God, I'm honored and I pray that every seed that has been sown of, of, of commitment and of faithfulness of, you know, when it didn't seem easy to make the trip, Lord, they made the trip. Whenever all hell was broken against them, they still stayed diligent about attending church. And Father God, I pray that every seed that has been sown, Lord, it will not return void, but it'll, it'll be a blessing in the name of Jesus. It'll come back a hundredfold return in this lifetime. And Lord, in this season, in this time, Lord, I thank you that it's a season of peace. It's a season of rest. It's a season of just knowing and receiving your goodness upon their lives. And Lord, today we receive them. We receive their family. receive the girls into Lifehouse Fellowship. And we thank you for their partnership. We thank you, Lord for the anointing upon their lives that is not a one way street it's two sided what they have to give and offer to this body is is great and I pray Lord that they receive your love they receive your peace and Lord I thank you Lord that you're going to do the Ephesians exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ever that they could ever ask or think in their lives Lord I thank you that you're opening up to them windows of heaven and you're pouring out a blessing upon them Lord that they're protected they're not alone they're not isolated but Father God they're they they're home and there's safety in that and there's freedom in that 
Lord, we thank you for the Carrascos. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We all said, amen, amen. amen. Let's give them a round of applause. Here. two songs leading up to this but I I have so much to be thankful for I really do we uh, I'm an example my family is an example of redemption um, I find out by the way I found out last night that today is our anniversary happy anniversary <laughs> we've had a lot going on <laughs> she found out last night too by the way Listen, I gave, I gave God every reason in the world to give up on me, and he didn't. This world devoured me. He was there with his arms open wide. And I'm, uh, I'm loud when I'm worship. I'm probably, y'all probably hear me. And, uh, and I'm loud because I'm, I'm very grateful that, and I'm a little tone deaf. But for the most part, I'm grateful. Um, and I'm honored to talk about another way we worship and that's with our finances. And I'm honored to share that with you today because God, He is faithful in all of His promises. Not just some of them. He's faithful in all of them. You know, and the other day I'm driving to work and I kind of go through some neighborhood roads and whatnot. And, and I know this is, we're at church, so this is weird, but, you know, I'm noticing the dead tree squirrels on the ground, right? And, and I got to thinking, you know, I said, I mean, that's pretty often that I see these squirrels. Um, <laughs> on, the, on, the, on the pavement as, as often as they do. I mean, it's pretty common that a tree squirrel gets ran over by a car. And, 
here's God's most, most acrobatic creature that can't dodge a car going 25 to 35 miles an hour in a neighborhood road. I mean, these guys can dig near fly as they scamper through things. They can react on a dime. They're fast. They can jump. And yet they can't dodge a vehicle coming at them. And I'm, pon I'm pondering this. And uh, about that time, like, can't you ever do that? You're thinking about something and all of a sudden, about that time, here comes a squirrel. And he's beelining it across the road, right? And, I, and I'm like, holy crap. And, I, and I, just, I, I put on the brakes and I go to dodge it. He's going this way. I'm going to dodge him this way. And at the last second, that squirrel changes directions, right? And thump, my brakes, I hit the ground and almost hit the squirrel. He was, y'all thought I hit the squirrel, didn't you? He, anyway, he's looking at me, and I didn't know the squirrel's eyes got that big, but he's looking at me. And he almost, in squirrel language, thanked me. And we both knew it was a close call. And about that time, he stopped, and he turned around, and he went back to the direction that he was heading in the first place. And sure enough, here comes oncoming traffic, and splat, my drink goes everywhere. As I'm trying to scream to these people to stop, there's a squirrel crossing the road. Anyway, the squirrel made it to the other side. One of the animals that are, God's animals are least likely to get hit by a car, and they get hit all the time. And we wonder why. Because they second-guess themselves. They're indecisive. They won't stick to a commitment. Fear freezes them. Fear turns them the other way. And as a result, we've got a mouth full of crushed nuts all over our city blocks. But all kidding aside, how many of us can seriously say that, you know, we second-guess ourselves many times? How many of us second-guess our God, even? How many times do we freeze when we're, we're heading towards a direction in God's plan and we freeze as soon as a storm or something scary happens or we get nervous about it or we even turn the other way? How many storms could we have avoided in our lives had we had just stuck to God's plan from the beginning? You know, his... I did it my way, and I was pretty good at it. Earth's way, the world's way. But it devoured me. God has a better way. I'm telling you right now, he does. God is faithful in all things. I think we should say that. God is faithful in all things. And our finances are part of that. And today I want to encourage you to make the God not just the Lord a part of your life, but in all parts of your life. And when we make that commitment, when we made that decision to make God the head of our life, that was a commitment that we stick to. That's a commitment regardless of the storms, regardless of what the world's saying, regardless of anything else, we stay that course. Because we have faith in Him. And you want to put your test in faith? Do it with your finances. So, I mean, let's just face it, that's where a lot of us are thinking about every day. That's what causes so many issues that we have in our homes and, and what we're worried about. Man, put your faith in God and His promise and what He instructed us to do. Let's not second guess our Father. We're in good hands. He loves us. So guys, if y'all will, if we can declare today in prayer, our Father God, today I choose your promises. Your principles that you said a long time ago. I pray that I can be a good steward with what you bless me with right now. Father, I pray that I may be sensitive and open to any calling to fill with my resources. Lord, I worship you today with my giving. Lord, I declare this seed takes root in this ministry, in this church, that these seeds play a part in adding to your kingdom, breaking chains, loosing bonds, slaying giants of addictions, resentments and anxieties, mending families, healing marriages, miracles of healing the sick and bringing peace and joy and thanksgiving in your deliverance. Lord, I declare a protection over our current finances, Lord. I declare shake and press down an overflowing return of blessing in a way that only you can deliver, Lord. In Jesus' name, ushers, you may serve the people.
so thankful for this opportunity. Many of you heard my story a couple weeks ago when I talked to you about divine connections and appointments and at camp and I I just was you know I I go to a to those camps just to you know take in what God is doing in our youth and what God is doing in the youth across America but this particular camp this year was there was something that triggered and in our teenagers, but not only in our teenagers, but I feel like there was something that triggered in our nation, a great awakening, so to speak. And with divine connections and divine appointments, I believe God is aligning things for the great end time harvest. How many of y'all believe that the harvest is, is great? Amen. And with that, uh, I had I had spoken to several of our young men about speaking to the congregation, and and I was like, the timing has got to be just right. And and Brother Cohen, he he uh, he was so pumped and on fire. I've never seen a a transformation like I had seen in Cohen. And, and um, you know, when you take these young people to these camps and, and you watch the Holy Ghost do His work, it, it's, it's quite remarkable uh, to see the, the results of that. And, and Brother Cohen, that day, he made a commitment for Christ, but he also verified his commitment through water baptism at camp. And I said, you know, we're going to do it here, but we're going to do it when we get home too, okay? And so today we're, we're doing it because we, we want to, he wants to make this public display in front of his church body. He did a public display in front of his peers. Now he wants to do it in front of his family and in front of you. Would you welcome Brother Cohen as he comes down? <laughs> yeah, you're talking that. <laughs> can y'all hear me? Yeah, they can. Okay. So this year was my first year to go to a camp, and like, I can't even describe. Like, it really changed my life. Like, I've never really wanted to. Like, I've always thought camps are cool and stuff, and and like, they're supposed to be, you know, for fun. And I don't know. And I tried it. And it just it just changed my life. Like I've never been so close to God, and and I I felt the Holy Ghost inside of me, and I just felt like a whole new person. Like that was it. Like I feel like fresh and everything's new. Yeah. I remember this conversation you and I, I had after one of those services. You said, "I've never felt this way before." <laughs> How many y'all remember that time? When the Holy Ghost touched him, he said, I never felt this way before. And I, I remember saying to you, is it cool? <laughs> but we can have that feeling 24-7, right? We can take Jesus with us everywhere we go. And today it's an honor and privilege for me to, to baptize you in front of our family and friends. And... Uh, Cohen, have you asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life? Yes, sir. Wow. It's amazing. I'm excited because I know that from this day forward, it's going to be a new life for you. And I want you to know these people are going to be praying for you. Aren't we, church? We're going to be praying for you. Because who knows, we might have the next Billy Graham on our hands. One moment with God will change your life forever. Right? Changed your life. Cohen, stand right here, son. We'll, we'll do like this. You're so long. <laughs> it's an honor and privilege for me. Okay, we'll do like this. There we go. To baptize you. 
the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus. Let's all stand. Come on, let's continue to worship. Let's continue to give honor and glory to God. Come on, continue to praise Him. We live to shout a praise to you, Lord. We're so thankful for you, Father. You're magnificent, wonderful, holy. Hallelujah. Come on, shout to the King. Shout to the King. We worship and adore you, Lord. Luke 15, 1 says, Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. This is Jesus speaking in verse 4. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after that one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I found my lost sheep. Just so I tell you. There will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. God's not looking for a righteous person. He's not looking for a person that's got it all together. He's looking for the lost. That's what Jesus came to do. He came to seek and save the lost. Now, once you get saved, you have a responsibility to pursue a relationship with the Lord. You understand me? You pursue right relationship. You, you're working towards righteousness, right standing with the Father. But the love of the God, of love of God is going after the one who's lost and who has not found him. That's why Jesus came. And he paid the ultimate sacrifice. His love, his love seems reckless. Because he goes after the one and he says, I'll, I'll, I'll give it all. I'll give it all for this one. And that's what Jesus did. He laid down his life for the one sometimes we don't understand the love of the father but when you experience it you understand it you'll mess up your makeup come on women you'll mess up your makeup you'll do whatever it takes to get before the king and lay down before his throne men when you really experience the love of the father when you had no earthly father who showed you how to be a man, how to treat your family, how to treat your wife, how to raise your children, how to do just normal things, God, when you understand what God comes in your life and he says, I'll show you the way. I'll show you everything you need. I'll put people in your life that's going to help you along the way. When you submit to that and you understand the love of the father and what he's willing to do for you, guess what? It doesn't matter if your knees get some holes in them because you're willing to come up here and say, God, I'll give you everything. I'll surrender all because you're worth it. You're worthy to be praised. Young people, you need to understand when you know the love of the Father, even now as a young person, people will see you and say something is different. I want what they have because that God's love radically changes you. It shakes you up. It brings you to a place where you say, God, I need you. And you can't help but run to the altar or run and get in your secret place and lay flat before the Lord and say, God, I need you more. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you, Jesus, for your love and the ultimate sacrifice that you made for us. And today, God, we come before you with clean hands and a pure heart, worshiping you, the King of kings and the Lord of lords.
before I spoke a word, before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. Though the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God, oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. I was your foe, still your love fought for me. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, yeah. Reckless love of God. You won't light up. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, you're coming after me. Sing the snow wall. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down. There's no shadow. There's no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up. You're coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down. Lie you won't tear down. You're coming after me. There's no shadow. There's no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up. You're coming after me. There's no wall you won't the
come on sing it again
more time, one more time. up your hands all across this auditorium this morning and just receive the love of the Father just receive it Jesus. 
You know, last night, there I am. I think is it there's always been this desire. I think it's in the deep in the heart of every man this house 
but you want seed that produces good fruit. I think it's in this, the heart of every woman and every mother that you want your sons and your daughters to love Jesus like you love him. Today's a special day because I, I was led by my son into the Holy of Holies. That's a beautiful place to be and it's a beautiful place to beautiful place to know. You know, our generation, we just desire good fathers, good mothers, good people to speak into our lives. And there are times that the enemy says you're never going to make it there are times that you feel like you fall short in so many ways and then the Lord reminds you like today and like last night that his love endures forever his faithfulness stretches to the skies you know this morning I desire for you to feel the way I feel. I'm honored, but yet I'm humbled. Because I know God is raising up another generation. He's raising up the next Billy Grahams. He's raising up the next Kenneth Copelands, the next Rick Warrens, the next Bill Hybels. we have to be people that are generational and that think about the next generation if your child is here right now I just want you to reach over if your grandchild is here right now I just want you to reach over I want you to love on them go mama go love on your son and your daughter we have Alex too I can't be more prouder of my daughter. Both of my daughters serving Jesus. Have we had bumps in the road as a family? Yeah, we have. But the mark of a spiritual family is that you don't quit. Mama, go get your boys. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. It's about family. What good is it if we gain the whole world but lose our children? What good is it if we we win the loss but we lose our children? We have to be about the next generation. your son. He's taller than you are. When did that happen? Goodness gracious, you're growing up, buddy. He's taller than his mama. Now, I know mama ain't very tall, but come on. You say, well, I've done it wrong. It's okay. You're doing it right now. God can redeem your past. He can reconcile you over that that quick.
David, you and Bonnie, I think about how God's just revolutionized you. Your family. I'm so honored. Ben, and God be good. Has God been good or what? Tell me about it. God's been great. <laughs> Tell us about what God's been doing. Or you want to go back? <laughs> well, I, I came from a, uh, in the last few years, came from a, a relationship or a, a marriage that wasn't as good as it, as it could have been. A lot of that was, was my fault. And uh, he brought me out of that through the support of friends and family here. I mean, I, I couldn't have done it on my own. And because I was surrounded by everyone here who, who helped me keep my eyes on him, brought me Laura and Leland and now things are better than they ever were and better than I ever thought they could be and uh, now it's hard to think of it being any other way and it's just like this was was his plan all along and to kind of speak to what he said earlier I I tried it my way and I got my results so I did it God's way and I'm getting God's results One more time, love so deep. So deep, it washes over me. Your face is all I see. You are my everything. Jesus Christ. during worship I just come down from speaking on the offering message and, and and they Pastor Matt, Brother Matt and Miss Abigail were leading us into worship in the middle of the song I felt God's embrace and in that embrace he spoke some words and he said Jeremy everything's going to be okay I've got your back he knows what I've been thinking about. He knows kind of what I've been praying about. And the Lord took me to Genesis 22. We have to know God as our provider because he is Jehovah Jireh. He's Jehovah Jireh. I don't know who this is speaking to today, but I just want to convey it to you before I get into the meat of the message and Genesis 22 verse 11 
It says, but the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, here am I. And he said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in the thicket by its horn. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. God provided at the last moment. In the New King James, let me read it out of the New King James because it's a little bit more clear. It says, And Abraham... Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place, the Lord will provide. The Lord will provide. As it said. that are needing some wisdom to step breakthrough is now my wife called me Monday and said Jeremy I feel like there's been a you, you'll do a better job of explaining it do you mind explaining what you talked to me about we felt like we've been under this place of Grab that microphone, babe. I'm going to butcher this. You know you always got to be ready with me. You, know, you should know that for 20 minutes. I'm learning. Um, it seems like we've been wrestling. Um, that God has been sending blessings, but there's been these weird situations and circumstances that are holding back. I mean, literally, you can... I have confirmation that there is money bookmark for this church that cannot be released to this us in the name of Jesus and there are times when you fight in the natural and you do everything you know in the natural and it's like nothing's moving you've got to take it up to the spiritual you have to step up and say it's not enough for me to sit here and argue with this lady on the phone it's not enough for me to be aggravated because they're not doing what they said they would do I've got to take it to a higher authority I've got to go to another place in the spirit and I've got to say in the name of Jesus, get your hands off of what God ordained for this body. Pray. Father, thank you right now yeah. for every family, for every business that's represented here today. And we declare that there is no assignment from the kingdom of darkness that can hold them back. Yes. We loose finances yes. into their hands. We loose clients into their lives. Yes. This is not a dry land. This no. is not a This is not a saturated business world, but in the name of Jesus, there is a place for you. There are people looking you down. They're trying to find you, to give to you. God said that men would give into your bosom. And so we call forth streams of revenue into your lives. We call forth for the revenue to come into your hands in the name of Jesus. And we bind the enemy who would try to hold back what God has purposed for you and your family. And I release favor now. Now, favor upon favor upon favor upon this body. I thank you, Lord, that the seeds that have been sown years and years and years ago that haven't returned back. I pray, Father God, for the big whopping harvest upon this body, upon these people right now in the name of Jesus. Satan, get your hands off God's money. Get your hands off God's resources. Get your hands off God's provision in the name of Jesus. It's loose now. We thank you, Father, for it. We all said.
Amen. If you believe that, give the Lord praise in this house. You can be seated. Hallelujah. Man, I'm glad I showed up for church today. How about you? Hallelujah. You know, it's, it's not enough just to go through the motions, y'all. But in that, God wants to do something. You're just showing up is half the battle. You know, before I get into the Word, I, I just I sense that I need to tell this story. And it's about the source. One day I was on the golf course and I was a young boy. Y'all have heard me tell my golf stories and I, I've, got, I've got a lot of golf stories. Last week I was betting on the putting greens. This week I was drinking out of the fountain that they were watering the golf course with. I'm hot. It's, a, it's you know, what we had worked is because I was selling all those golf balls on my on the property right there next to the golf course. Remember all those bags of golf balls I had? I, I was selling them for 25 cents. And evidently I was selling so much and making so much that the pro of the golf course, Jerry Dixon, came over and said, you can't sell golf balls anymore. And I said, well, I'm on my property. And he said, I'll tell you what, if you'll quit selling golf balls, you come over here and play golf anytime you want, and at the turn, you come in and get a Coke and a candy bar and just don't sell any more golf balls. Evidently, I was eating into his profits. So I get to go play golf every time, anytime I wanted to. I just go in there and say, hey. He said, all right, get on it. So I'm out playing golf, and it's summer, it's hot. I just played 18. I'm going to play another 18. And, and uh, I'm walking, of course. I, I'm too young to do the cart thing. And I'm out on hole number, I believe it was hole number four. And it's a dog leg left. Those of you golfers, you understand, about 370 yards but out in the middle of this thing, they've got water sprinklers going, and I'm thirsty. So I run over real quick, and I begin to just drink up. Oh, my goodness. Good, 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 good. And all of a sudden, I hear, hey, hey, don't drink that. Good, 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 good. I'm thirsty. Finally, this guy on the cart comes over and says, hey, 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 don't be drinking that. I said, why? He goes, come for that pond right there. <laughs> ah! You better know who your source is. You better know where, where you're getting your stuff from. Thank God for the local church. You can count on this place being a, a good source of supply of all the nutrients you need to live a successful, holy, righteous life. I've never, never gone wrong doing it God's way. better know where your source is guys the world system is going to fail the source called the world will lead you to a place of desperation will lead you to a place where you're looking for more because you'll never be satisfied but if you'll do it God's way you'll never go wrong if you'll turn to the source Jesus he'll fill you he'll fill you up to overflow amen see God wants to use you as his display he wants to put you and your family on display 
He wants to put you on a pedestal and show the world what, what God is doing in you. You know, and as we go on our family vacations, what a greater way for us to recognize and see what God's doing in our lives. A lot of times just looking around, we get to see, whoa, man, we are really extremely blessed. Getting outside our four walls, we get to see that the blessings of God are make rich and he adds no sorrow with it. When we do it God's way, we get God's results and God's results is, are, 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 are contagious. God's results are, 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 are attractive. And people want to know what you How'd you get where you're at? How, how, is, how, how are you doing this? And, and you, you get to be on display and you get to say, but by the hand of God. And as parents and as, and as leaders and as grandparents and aunts and uncles, as we're leading our children, it's important that we disciple We don't leave it on others to do disciple. We don't leave it on others to train our children. Don't think the school system is going to get it done because they're falling. And as much as I I appreciate every teacher and every principal and every executive that's helping our children, that was never supposed to be the place where our kids were going to be trained in the knowledge and wisdom of God. The place where our children are trained is in the home. And as much impact as I have here at the church and in our youth ministries and our children's ministry, I promise you, they're not just doing colored pages back there, babysitting your kids. No, there's an impartation of the Holy Ghost going on back there. And thank God for this moment and for this time that we have teachers back there that are loving on our kids, that are imparting, that have prayed, been prayed up to speak a now word to our children, a now word to our youth. But as good as that is, the lasting impact of a relationship with God starts and ends in the home. What are you doing at home? You know, discipline at my house back in the day used to be a terrible thing. I've since grown up. I've since come to my my senses and understanding of, you know what? It's not about spanking the butt. True discipline happens when there's a breaking relationship. I make it so good at home. I make it so good in my relationship with my child, in my relationship with whoever, that that whenever there is a a break because they disobey, what hurts them is not the paddling. No, what hurts them is the breaking relationship. We read last week in Hebrews chapter 12 that whom the Lord loves, he chastens. Whom the Lord loves, he corrects. If we don't correct our children, we're doing them an unservice. A great, and and, and we're not, we're not, we're not providing for them because how many of you know that the Bible says that whom the Lord loves, he corrects, that even he has to correct us at 43 years old. Wherever you're at, however old you are, you know that God still is correcting you. And if he isn't correcting you, I would check up on your sonship. I would check up on your status as a, as a son and daughter. Because let me tell you, as, as a father, I'm always up in Winston's Kool-Aid. I'm always up in Alex's Kool-Aid. Savannah, not so much. She moved. (laughs) 
But like I've always said, my house, my rules. We're not going to watch just anything on TV. We're not going to just listen to anything we want to listen to. We're going to stay in the Word. We're going to watch. I mean, I remember, I'll, I'll never forget the stories, you know, Tanya, she'd go, she'd put all these parental blocks on TV. And they would call her during summertime. And they'd say, Mom, we can't even watch Walker, Texas Ranger. And, and, and Tanya would say, well, maybe there's some violence on there you don't need to be watching. What was the commercial? <laughs> they knew the AARP commercial really well. Winston said, my legs are hurting. I need some Mirapex. We were like, what's Mirapex? He goes, it's, 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 it's medicine for restless leg syndrome. Man. <laughs> Don't let them just watch anything. You be the parent. You lead, you guide. Turn in your Bibles to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 6. This is going to be, make this your anthem. And as I finish this series today, I'm going to leave you with a challenge. Before I get to there, I'm going to read Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5 through 9. It says, you shall love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them. You shall teach another generation. And I don't want that to be on our hands. We have to train. 